exhaust I've got BBK shorty headers got a Bizani X pipe I've got um, a Borla exhaust the first Borla exhaust offered for a 99 Mustang and crazy story about that was I was one of the first people to order the Borla exhaust for the 99 Mustang and the exhaust system never never showed up. I had to have them do a claim. How in the world do you lose an eight-foot box full of exhaust components? I have no idea. But after about six months of, of finally getting the exhaust um, and, and put on it, another one of those performance gain things, um, take, the, take the catalytic converters off, Really not that much of a performance gain. Um, exhaust, um, nickel and diming performance gains. It's not like a, a Ford Lightning where, good grief with a Ford Lightning, you could put a, a mass air meter, like a 90 millimeter mass air meter on it and get like 40 horsepower out of, out of those. Um, a Cobra, the four valve Cobra. Um, naturally aspirated. You can get really good gains out of putting cams in it in a good tune. But the two valves, you're just not going to find, you know, you're not going to get the passing a GTR performance like you would with, with, with other cars. Kind of a, you know, I would say a dirty little secret of mine was when I went to go buy the car, I was kind of trying to get the most bang for my buck for, for the money. At the time, this was around the fastest car for the money that I could buy. I got it for 19 grand back then for a fully loaded GT for the performance was 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 pretty good money for the performance. And if you had just an average car, um, I was going I was going around you in in '99. There wasn't too many things on the road. Um, even you know you get the occasional Corvette, but Usually the Corvettes and the Trans Am guys, they just kind of ignored you. So they were in their own world, I guess. After I bought the car, my brother, he, uh, he worked at a GM dealership in, in, in Minnesota. I live in South Carolina. He told me he could have gotten me a fully loaded Z28 for the same money. Had I known I would end up having um, a Z28 instead of instead of the mustang because i was trying to get the most the most performance for the money and and they wanted you know twenty six thousand dollars for a z28 and they wanted well over 30 for a trans am back in 99 and that that was just kind of out of my price range so i ended up with the mustang and that gtp pontiac that i went to go look at it was comparably priced but it just i wanted it because it was pretty <laughs> i liked the way it looked at the time and it wasn't as expensive as trans am yes i know it's dirty but this is underneath the front i have a steeda sway bar i've got a canton oil pan i've got tubular k member i've got the bump steer kit and as far as the subject of the bump steer kit, I've got two sets of these spherical bearings for the tie rod ends. Um, as far as the tie rod ends go, um, in my case, I've got a lot of um, weight shaved off my front end. And these actually wear out fairly quick. They're not supposed to, and they're supposed to have a warranty. But I keep two sets 
I, my philosophy is, you know, one set is none, and two sets is just enough. So I do have it lowered, which over the past few years, I've been going higher and higher with my ride height because I'm tired of not being able to go over speed bumps in the car. One of my more proud projects, I can say, is replumbing the transmission lines to AN fittings. This is not fake. These are real AN fittings. The only suggestion I would say is instead of drilling and tapping, I would get someone to, to put one of those weld on AN bungs to make this job a whole lot easier. I've got Here's one of those AN feed bungs I was talking about. They just weld it right in. That's what I'll I'll do or I should have done next time. So I have these um, in case that starts leaking because I'm not going to mess with it again. Got the feed line and I've got the return line. I got them both plumbed to the original lines going back to the transmission because I was tired of I was tired of having a leak with these eBay radiators. I, I'm not going to spend four or five hundred dollars for you know a big three core radiator when I can get one of these for less than 150 bucks and if it blows out in a year and a half so what I'll just buy another one for less than a hundred dollars and have someone weld in a bung but I've never had any problem with these eBay special radiators I've never had one blow out knock on wood they, they are kind of flimsy I'd be careful putting them in if you touch them at all you'll probably you know put a hole in it but once you get it in it's it's fine these aftermarket reservoirs you definitely want to replace these if you've got an old one replace it it is going to go out on you uh, they like to separate the plastic i've still got a ford cap if you can stick with four components electronics idle air speed sensors any kind of electronics you want to go with ford i don't go with anything else um, the difference there's like two different sensors for like the first generation 99 Mustang and the second generation 99 Mustang after like the mid year, they actually want the VIN number. So if you go to a parts store just getting idle air control sensors or fuel rail sensors, there's like two different types of fuel rail sensors. You're making a big mistake by not going to Ford and, and, and getting those sensors and that's what I do not cheap out on is sensors. The Ford belts are worth the money as well. They are almost sticky, the Ford belts, for, for these cars. And for the 99 through 2000 models that have a, you know, the, the belt slippage problem, you wanna put a Ford belt, you wanna get a good water pump. I've got a, a good aftermarket water pump and the pulleys are our factory pulleys don't underdrive don't get to underdrive pulleys it's not worth the few horsepower and if you have a stereo system you end up buying a bigger alternator and you eliminate the whole reason why you got the underdrive pulleys when you should have just stayed with the factories if you switch to led headlights and tail lights and you know you go all all LEDs, you won't get the the dimming if you have if you have a, a stereo system in this car. And plus, you bought the car to drive it, not to have a competition stereo in it. If you upgrade the wiring to zero gauge wiring, like I have, and put bigger bigger clamps on it, I know it's it's really hard to see, but I use this stuff, this fabric tape to recover all of my wiring that I can get to easily. And I also welded a screw for my ground and I have all my grounds going to the frame and to the fender well. And I also have another, I've also got another, I believe that's probably about a, um, a four gauge wire going from the stock location all the way I've got it bolted to 
the alternator for the um for the I guess you'd call the the big the big three wiring and with a stock alternator it makes a world of difference. That's also because I have a, a bad relocation kit. It got double lock gauge wire going all the way to my battery. So the farther you go away from the battery, the more voltage drop you get and the bigger the wire you need. And I also have my battery grounded in two separate locations in my trunk. I've got it grounded to the frame mount going through the floorboard and I also have it going to the fender well. So I've got as much stuff grounded as I can. I also want to say thank you for your patience, my rambling. I Sometimes I, I stutter a lot and no, I don't want any sympathy. I get hit on the head while I was in the military. So um, my videos take me a little bit longer to edit and I keep rambling on about things. That's why I have to cut my videos, a lot of videos in half because I keep going. Um, thank you for the, I really appreciate the new subscribers that I've just gotten. I, I need to get to a thousand. I can get YouTube to actually monetize my account. They changed the algorithm. You can't just get a bunch of hits and get monetized. It's not about getting paid. It's about being able to, to make more content with having some income. Thanks again. You know, please give me more uh, comments so I can, you know, shorten my videos up focus on certain things and not ramble off. I'll see you guys next time. I really appreciate it. Thank you for those who have joined and subscribed to the Swamp Fox family. If you can give me a thumbs up, comment in the description, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, please look for the links in the description. Become a Patreon member if you want to support the channel.